Hi everyone! Happy um, Tuesday! So today I want to share with you uh, some of the things that I do to my hair that makes it look nice and smooth. Um, I get a lot of questions on, Kelly, what do you do to your hair and um, what do you, you put in it? So honestly, I don't use a lot of products just because I don't want it to weigh my hair down. And also I'm just lazy. So um, I usually just spray in my um, leave-in conditioner because um, my hair extensions tend to get very matted. So I have it in uh, sprayed in so that it detangles when I'm brushing. So it's very important that before you brush your hair, you're spraying in a leave-in treatment of some sort. Um, you can use whatever you have, whatever you like, or if you want to know what I use, you can comment below and I can share that with you. But before you brush, you need to put something in the hair so that it helps to detangle the hair because the hair is most fragile when it's wet. So um, it's not when it's dry. So when it's wet, it's very fragile. So you have to be extra gentle in brushing um, so that you're not ripping the hair out, right? So a lot of time when we see uh, our hair not growing, you ask like, my hair takes forever to grow. It's not because your hair don't grow because you still see roots coming out if you're coloring your hair. But your hair doesn't get long because it's keep breaking off due to because you didn't take care of it. So um, if you want to know more on how to gently take care of your everyday hair, I can do a separate video on that. But um, today I'm just going to show you some of the things I do to make my hair look nice, um, but effortless. Like I don't spend 30, 20, an hour styling my hair because I just don't have time. So the stuff that I use totally helps it to be very quick and it looked like I just had a salon blowout done. So first of all, after my hair is dry, uh, either naturally or with like a hair dryer, like just dry on like warm to hot heat, it's okay to use heat on your hair as long as you're protecting it with um, you know, leave-in conditioner or, sorry, leave-in treatments or um, detangler or oil, Olaplex, whatever, right? So as long as you have something to treat the hair, um, then when you're styling with hot air or like heat, it's fine. And then um, I just blow dry the hair dry just so it's dry, like completely dry. And when I mean dry, it's not like half damp. Because a lot of time um, I ask my clients like, how dry is your hair when you're styling with heat? And they say, well, it's about 80, 90%. No, it has to be completely dry because if the hair has moisture or dampness in it, it will not take the heat. And actually it, it repel against the heat, if that's made any sense. Unless if you're blow drying with heat and air because the air is helping to dry the hair along with heat, that is okay because you're drying your hair. But if you're putting like a curling iron, a flat iron onto your somewhat dry, half dry, half wet or half damp or like 10% still damp, it's not going to take. So just make sure that your hair is completely like 100% dry like what you're seeing on my hair right now. If you're using any hot rollers, curling iron, flat iron, um, anything that's like metal heat okay so after I have my hair dry um, it's frizzy so I put them in these hot rollers so these are the jumbo rollers that I've got okay it's about two inches and uh, it's made out of felt okay um, therefore it's really good for you to style the hair with this so what I do I'll show you. So this is what it looks like when it's done. It doesn't have to be perfect. See, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, section it in as many sections as you possibly can. Uh, in this case, I have five uh, because that's the only amount of hot rollers I have. So once you your hair is dry, you section it and then you roll the ends of the hair first like this. Okay, roll the ends of the hair in. Once the end of the hair in, use both hands, roll up like this, tucking the ends of the hair inside. And when you're done rolling all the way up, you just clip it like this. So it's very straightforward. 
it does take practice so if you do it like eight times and you didn't get it perfectly don't feel bad try two more times and then the tenth time you'll get it because i've been doing this for years so that's why i'm more efficient at it but uh, if you're just doing this um new then of course it's gonna be hard so i left it on for like half an hour as i was like sweeping up my house and um doing the dishes and now it's pretty cool so when you put it in, it's a bit on the warmer side, like not too hot, like a flat iron hot, but it's, um, you know, warm. So once you roll it, um, it smooths out the hair like this. So you see how the hair is a lot more smoother. Okay. So once it's warm, well, not warm, once it cools down, um, I take them out and you can see after taking them out, the hair automatically look a lot more smoother. So because of these rods being bigger size, it doesn't give me too much of a curl. It just gives me more of like um, a, a curve on the ends. See, like it's just a curve. It's not actually a curl. So depending on how you want your hair looking, um, you can choose. I wouldn't go any, um, smaller than an inch and a quarter because then you'll be getting ringlets and you don't want that you just want more volume so if you have a bigger rod like this one it gives you more volume as you're seeing my head look like a balloon right now but that's how i like it and after when it's done i don't brush it out but i just kind of fluff it up with my hands like this and then i may run it through holding the hair ends like this so rather than putting like more product in um, i find it makes my hair a little greasy looking um the reason why it looks so much volume is because it looks more fluffy right so i don't like to put anything in after and uh, make it look too sleeky because um usually i wear the um style for like two days so i want it to last longer so by the next day, when after I sleep on it, it becomes more like sleeker, flatter because of my natural oil, right? So see, I just roll it like this with my hands, okay? And then that's it. So this is with the hot rollers. Hold on, let me get um, my mirror. So a girl always have to have her mirror and after um, you style the hair, you can look in the mirror with the mirror so you can see um, how the hair looks. See? So it looks good to me, nice and smooth. And this is just using the hot rollers, right? So because of the rollers being this size, Sorry, just gonna fix. Just because um, the rollers being this size of a rod, it actually uh, brings out all of the layers in my hair. Um, if I didn't put these rollers in, my hair would be more frizzy and straight. But because I have set these uh, rollers in my hair, all of the layers that you see, the definition, it comes out, right? So a lot of time it's not that you don't have any style or layers in your hair it's just that the layers have not been um, defined and whether you're defining it with sorry i'm fixing my phone um whether you're styling it with like hot rollers or curling iron or a round brush with a blow dry that is what giving you that definition on the ends of the hair but blow drying with a round brush um takes forever especially on my length of hair. Um, curling iron, mm, too much heat because every day curling your hair with like a metal rod does take a big toe. Uh, flat iron is the worst. Um, anything else is pretty much all like metal heat. But with the hot rollers, like I mentioned, they are made with felt like this. So there's no metal contact to your hair which makes your hair very um not not 
like it's not as damaging as using curling iron and um, flat iron. So that is my hair after styling it with hot, with hot rollers. Okay. And by the way, um, this is my hair extensions. My hair is never this long. Um, it's actually very short. A lot of breakage because um, this summer I got bored and I was getting so dark. So I uh, did highlights on my hair and lots of breakage. Like here, these are not actually layers. They're just like broken pieces of highlighting. So because um, I like to be lighter, I like to be blonder. Um, once you're a blonde, I guess you're forever a blonde, I guess. I can't picture myself going back black. I just look hideous and old and groomy, right? So therefore, um, I like to stay light. And even though in the camera right now, it doesn't look like I'm light, but um, I'm actually like a level 9-ish, 10. Because the tone that I'm using is more of like a... Like a um, ash or like a silvery tone that's why it's not reflecting the light as much as a pale yellow blonde so you don't see that bright yellow like for example this is like a weight right um i'm not this blonde but very close right i would say two levels down so compared to what i am and compared what this is um because this is yellow you see it more brighter, you, you, it stands out more. But because my color, even though my base color is similar uh, to this level of lightness, but because I'm using more of a cool tone, like a lilac, silvery um, tone that you see here, um, it looks darker, but if you see both color or both hair, one, because it's yellow, that's why it looks brighter, and one is more on a lilac silvery side that's why it looks more um, darker but technically um, it's not darker it's just a different tone so in order to get this bright of a color i have to highlight or i don't want to use bleach because uh, it's not you're bleaching your clothes it's actually enlightening my hair but the common term for the public is bleaching your hair right so i have to enlighten it to this similar pale yellow for me to tone the color lilac silver, you see? So along, if I put that aside, it's very light. And I'm a natural level two, which is like a dark, dark brown. That's why um, every time I highlight my hair, it's so um, much breakage, even though I use Olaplex. But because I'm so dark, um, it takes a big toll on my hair. So that's why my hair can never grow long, which is thankful for hair extensions. So um, if you're looking at my hair right now, it looks nice and full. It is because of hair extensions. I wasn't born with it. So just to let um, you know that those of you who like to go for those funky color, not funky color, but these trendy color nowadays like you know lush rose silver titanium like silver like gray looking platinum kind of look you're gonna have to bleach your hair or enlighten your hair to this level pretty much regardless if you're like a medium brown a dark brown a black color or like a dark blonde whatever level of color you are if you want to be more of like a these trendy color that you see all over Instagram, um, your hair has to be lightened, very light. And um, some people, so the darker natural level you are, the more times you have to enlighten or bleach your hair. So I have to bleach my hair like two, three times to get this. And sometimes it's not even in one visit, it has to be multiple visits because your hair can only handle so much in one day. So those who are lighter, like a level, you know, dark blonde, like a level eight, nine, then it'll probably only take them like one visit to the salon or one time bleaching to get to here. But for me or anyone who is more darker hair, it takes a long time and depend on the 
density of the hair, the texture of the hair, if the hair is coarse or medium or fine. So um, just know that when you want to go these trendy colors, um, there's no way any color can get you to that. It always has to be bleach, enlighten, or uh, multiple time of bleach and enlighten, and then tone afterward. So after when uh, the hairstylist lighten your hair, um, it'll be either like a light yellow or a pale yellow or an orangey yellow. They either have to bleach you again or they're gonna tone you, right? So it's a multiple steps. And usually when I'm bringing my client from a dark brown to like my color, it's usually at least three visits of highlighting and toning. So it is a process and uh, Honestly, it's no less than five to five to six hours. Like the most I have spent time with one client is eight hours. She was in the salon for eight hours getting her hair done. So um, these colors are great, but again, they take time. So patience is the key, okay? Um, there are things that you cannot rush and coloring is one of them. So um, it's beautiful to have nice, great hair but just keep in mind that it takes time so just to show you that um, I had to highlight my hair to close to this light blonde to get this color okay so um, don't be surprised if uh, when you go to the salon and uh, the stylist tell you what I tell you today in this video because you know there's no magic it's the same theory it's the same process that all the hairstylists have to do to get to that. And some may work faster than others, you know, so that's depending on the stylist, but the concept and the theory, the fundamental concept of hair still apply, right? So just a little bit of FYI for you. So, um, so that was me sharing you how to style with these hot rollers. Now, another tool that I have, which is really efficient, and I think that whether you have hair as long as mine, or you have hair that's shorter and you don't have these hot rollers, another great alternative is a brown brush uh, built-in blow dryer. So if you style your hair um, with a brush in one hand and the blow dryer in the other hand, it's a lot of work. And regardless if you have long hair or short hair, not everyone is a hairstylist and I understand that. So you're struggling to get yourself coordinated. But if you get yourself a built-in one brush with a blow dryer, it makes your life so much easier. So this is what I do um, on the second day. So on the first day, I will put my hair in hot rollers like this. The second day, if my top get greasy, I'm just gonna section section my bottom half into a ponytail or a bun, and then I just wash the top part of my hair. And after I wash it, um, either I blow dry, dry, and then put in hot rollers, or I can use, I can towel dry my hair really dry, let it dry like 70, 80%, and then I can use this. So this, you can actually use on towel dry hair. So hair that's like 70, 80% dry. Um, because it has a blow dryer in it, you can, and it blows out air, and it has heat, you can use that. So I'm just gonna turn it on. Um, if you're not good with noises, just turn down your volume. But I'm gonna turn it on so you can hear what it sounds like. So literally, in here is a blow dryer, right? A mini blow dryer that's attached to this brush. So when you style it, you just have to use one hand. Well, yeah, you're holding one hand instead of holding a heavy blow dryer in uh, the one hand and the brush in the other hand, like the old style way. So I'm just gonna turn on. It has two settings. So either it's on low or on high. And when you turn it on, low. And if you go up, another one is high. See that? 
So my uh, boss at the hair salon sells these. Very efficient. So we sell a lot of these um, for clients who are at home. Um, they just want to have easier um, way of styling and this works really well. So for example, um, my hair is dry right now, but let's say if you want to have more volume, you can hold this closer to the roots, okay? Blow dry for about, you know, two, three seconds and then bring it out, smooth it out like this. And if you want to have a bit of a curl at the bottom, you can just turn, see how I'm slowly turning the brush like this. And if you hold it like this for about, I say 20 seconds and you take it out, it gives you also a nice curl. So if you have the flat iron to style your hair, you can use that. But um, I find the flat iron doesn't really give you much volume because it's flat. But if you use a hot airbrush, this is called a hot airbrush. Um, it's a lot easier and it gives you a lot more volume. So um, these are the two hair styling tools that is my favorite that are my favorite um i use both of them right and i find them so much efficient so much easier than um hi jessica how are you um it's been forever um i hope you're doing well thank you so much for tuning in to my live stream today um so yes so if you can get access to a hot airbrush um, this is very good for those who have like medium hair to short hair, like very efficient. Maybe a lot slower for those who have hair like mine. That's why I don't use this all over my hair when my hair is uh, damp, right? I use it in certain areas or the top or this is a great traveling. So if you're traveling, um, vacationing and you're um, in the hotel and you don't have a lot of stuff, Bring this, right? Very easy. It blow dries and it styles in one. Make your life a lot easier so you don't have to carry like five different things. So that's that. Um, make sure that uh, when you're using this, um, your hair is not completely soaked. Because if your hair is completely wet, it definitely takes longer. But if you just let it air dry, hey, yep, I'm doing well. I'm still alive. <laughs> Um, yes, I'm doing very well. Um, I've been lacking so much on my YouTube channel with all the hair videos, but I'm getting back to it. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for being such a loyal subscriber, a, lo a loyal friend for so long, so many years, Jessica. So if you're ever in Toronto, make sure you give me a ring so that we can have some coffee and meet up. Okay? So, um... Right now, I'm just busy organizing our Taste of Vietnam Festival that we have in August. Uh, but after that, um, I will start doing a lot of hair tutorials or video tutorials. So uh, thank you so much for being a loyal um, subscriber, a loyal friend uh, for all these years. So I much appreciate that. And I hope you're doing well as well. Okay, so... Um, this is great if you're, you have short hair, medium hair. Uh, it works well on um, like wavy hair, not so much ringlets, like really tight, tight curls may not work so well. But if you have average normal hair, you know, half wavy, a little bit straight, it works really well, okay? So I'm just gonna turn this on. I use your layering tutorial to layer my sister hair. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I, I hope it helps. Um, I know my videos are very long, so you can just forward to whatever part you like, but I rather have enough information for like basic, basic, no experience um, viewers than to do such a quick video and that uh, um, a lot of you don't know the process, right? So I hope that these step-by-step, -step, very slow and long video. <laughs> Um, give you the enough information to to help you cut your own hair and your sister hair. So I'm glad she likes it. And I always and I always say, no matter how much someone show you or teach you, it's you who also have a talent too. So if if you don't have that talent in you, then whatever you watch wouldn't really help. But 
um, I'll take just like 30% of the credit and I'll leave the 70% for you and your good job. So good to hear that it turned out great. So I'm going to try this. Um, if I'm going to turn it on to show you how it works. If I love your videos, I watched the same one. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. That means a lot. It'll inspire me to do more videos. Um, again, all of my videos, besides sharing my knowledge with you, I, I do it to raise awareness for human trafficking and child exploitation. So for you to watch it and help me get more views and uh, more pay on YouTube, it goes straight to our charity. So um, I much appreciate it. So thank you very much. So if you're uh, having your volume high, please lower it because I'm going to turn this on. So this is great. Uh, if you're, you're doing those like if you're cutting or into those like curtain bangs this is a great tool for you to style as well right um, so for example I'm going to turn on and do a piece you pull it right because you don't want to have the um, hairbrush dryer going on while you're pulling your hair out so stop it hold the root of the hair and then take it out so once you take it out you can see you can get a nice smooth pretty curls out of that so if you have the patience to uh, section the hair and do it by sections you get really nice um, curls see that Okay, and this also works great on your bangs as well. Instead of using um, flat iron, okay, I know people use flat iron because it's easy, but honestly, if you're coloring your hair and you have bleach in there already, and you're just pressing that flat iron um, onto the hair like every day, you're, you're killing it. So just don't always take the easy way out. Um, use a hot air brush. So right now, see how curled that is? So if you wanted to get like that round brush curl look, this is great. And you could just use it for one, um, like one piece, one tool instead of like two things in your hand, like a blow dryer and a round brush. So very helpful. And those are some of the tips on how I style my hair. Right now I have some curtain bangs going on, as you can see right there. Um, those were actually accidental curtain bangs because I highlighted my hair for the summer and that's why um, it's um, have a bit of breakage and it turns into bangs and I just trim it some layers in it and uh, make it into a side swept or curtain bangs, right? But again, um, it's cute even when you're wearing your mask still and you know, you have some framing. And even if you put your hair up like this, okay? So for example, if your hair is up like this, um, it's nice to have some pieces down. And see, once the hair, the ends of the hair are nicely, um, you know, kind of curled like that. It's really cute when you're putting your hair up, like you get that nice 60 style look. See? That's also cute. So curtain bangs really works well and usually curtain bangs are around your, you know, see my nose from there? And then you can just give it a bit of layers. So the I wouldn't go any shorter uh, than the nose length as a guide. And then after you cut to there, you can layer in it if you want it to have a little bit shorter piece up here. Just remember that in order for the hair to sweep over like this, like a curtain bangs, you really need to give the hair some length. A lot of time, if you think that if you cut the hair, the bangs too short, uh, because it's in your eye, um, it's actually not gonna stay to the side, especially if you have poker straight, Asian, coarse hair. Um, 
for the the side fringe to like sweep like this it needs length so therefore when you're cutting bangs curtain bangs or any type of bangs try to not go scissor happy cut longer you can always cut it shorter but if you just you know think that you want it like at that length and you just chop it right there um, most likely it's going to turn out too short so with bangs it's like your curtain framing like face area um, try to be take your time when you're cutting bangs so if you're aiming to have it dry here i usually cut it here if you're aiming to have it around the nose length cut it where the chin is so that once you style it once you curl it you can see how it will fall and then um, slowly have it shorter so see the side curtain bangs give your hair a bit more framing and this is nice and cute for the summer if you're wearing into a ponytail like that okay but if not you can have it dangling down like um, a mermaid so um, that is my tips on how to style your hair and how to get this kind of look I get a lot of people asking me um, about my hair and I hope that these advice tips and tricks help you thank you so much for watching thank you Jessica it's so nice to see you on here um, thank you so much for watching if any of you watching this video have any questions on hair uh, feel free to comment below I'll be happy to um, answer them for you and if I can't answer them in like a text I'll do a video to explain it more clearly so wishing everyone a blessed day stay healthy stay safe out there and uh, we'll see you in the next video bye Jessica bye everyone and I'll see you guys again bye Mwah. have a good day